for SEC on CBS Game of the Week quite like that, huh? How about that? That's right, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that is where we will find the number one team in the nation, the consensus best team, no disagreement. Georgia is the top dog, and they're going to put that status on the line against Kentucky. I'm Chip Patterson, Tom Fernelli, Barrett Salit joining the conversation to break this game down. Now, Barrett, when we have seen Kentucky play its best against Georgia, and as it was just mentioned, they have been losing efforts for the last dozen. They have been able to try to you know, hold things as close as possible, play good defense, play some keep away, just try to keep it as low scoring as they can. Do you think that that is, again, going to be the, the approach that the Wildcats take against the Bulldogs on Saturday? Yeah, it'll be the approach, but I just don't know if they can actually accomplish that. I think those Tennessee or those Kentucky teams in the past actually were able to do that. They were strong on both lines of scrimmage. They had a game plan that was effective. You heard Kirby Smart in that package say that all their players to a man say that the Kentucky game is always the, the most physical game of the year. Well, it's not going to be this year because that's not how this Kentucky team is built. So I think if you're going to win, if you're Kentucky, you do have to play ball control, but you really need a great game from Will Levis. He has not been that great lately. More interceptions than touchdowns over the last four games. This is a guy who, like you said in the package, has NFL draft experts salivating for his services. The problem is he's not really showing them why lately so if they're going to beat georgia they need to be balanced and they really haven't been balanced offensively all year long yeah like you ask if that's the method that kentucky's going to use to face georgia what other method do they actually have to use they haven't showed any ability to have an explosive offense so far this season so unless they've been saving it all year for Georgia to catch them off guard, I really don't see what else they could do in this one. They're going to have to try to control the clock, try to move the ball, grind this one down, keep it close, hope Stetson Bennett makes a mistake or two that can they can flip the momentum in their favor, maybe get a lead and sit on it. But honestly, based on what we've seen from the Wildcats so far this year and that offensive line going up against that Georgia defense, I don't have a lot of hope for the Wildcats on Saturday. Well, maybe not to win, but what about to cover? Or maybe you like a play on the total, which is sitting right around 49, 49 and a half. Tom, what is your best bet for Georgia, Kentucky? Yeah, I, I, I don't like the spread as much just because with Georgia having the SEC East already wrapped up, I don't know if this game gets out of hand early. What is their plan in the second half? Do they just kind of coast or do they you know, keep the foot on the gas pedal? I like the under simply because I just don't know whether Georgia completely blows them out or it stays kind of close. I just don't know how many points Kentucky's going to be capable of scoring in this game. As I mentioned, their offensive line, one of the reasons Will Levis has looked so terrible this season is because he's had about 0.3 to 0.5 seconds to find an open receiver <laughs> before he's being pressured by the opposing defense. So I don't see how they're going to be able to slow that Georgia front down. I think Levis is going to be in trouble. I don't think Chris Rodriguez is going to be able to find much room to run to get anything going there. So I don't see the Wildcats scoring. So this way, I just get the spread out. Maybe Georgia gets 40-something on its own. I don't think it will. So give me the under 49 and a half. Maybe it's a 42-7 to 7 final. See, Tom, I'm going to fade you because what you just said, I think, is the most important. Can Georgia get to 45? Yeah. Can they get to 50? Yeah. I think for, for the offense for Georgia, the offense is going to have a field day. And they're going to keep their foot on the gas because Lad McConkey is their only reliable wide receiver deep. They're going to find somebody. A.D. Mitchell's absence has been huge for that wide receiving core. So they're going to try some things offensively. Get Marcus Rosemead, uh, Jack Saint involved a lot more than he has been throughout the course of the season. I think they're going to avoid Brock Bowers a little bit because they need to develop that downfield passing attack out of the wide receiver position. So I think from an offensive standpoint, they're going to keep, keep their foot on the gas. I think defensively, they might pull up, pull up a little bit early and get theirs in because that's the foundation of this team. That's how they're going to get to the national championship if they are going to get to the national championship. So I think they're going to preserve themselves defensively, but they still have some things that they want to figure out offensively, specifically production out of the wide receiver spot. Leo, we are going to take all of these points north of three <laughs> touchdowns, and we're going to lay them with the Georgia Bulldogs because I do think that this is a team that knows from experience 
how you need to be playing heading into championship season. And that offense, because of injuries, you know, has been a little bit of a work in progress. It starts really strong. They sort of uh, played with their food for a little bit in the middle of the season. Missouri and Kent State games <laughs> come to mind, maybe one quarter against Florida. But against Mississippi State, a slow start all of a sudden turned into a snowball as I think the Bulldogs are going to keep their foot on the gas. And did y'all see that the mailman is now the milkman? Stetson Bennett, apparently with a uh, NIL, I'm guessing NIL, no reporting here, but uh, Georgia Milk is now on board with the mailman, who is now the milkman. I think the milkman's bringing the goods to the table. I think that his own star power is another interest here to let him continue to play and play well. So give me Georgia. I will lay all of those points. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.